Okay, let's talk about epistemology. Now, there is a flaw in the way epistemology has been classically conceived. So let's break it down something like this. If I, your humble apologist, have a powerful spiritual experience, and I maintain that that experience was real to me, you, the person who's trying to decide the validity of it based on rationality, reason, analytical tools, need only ascertain one of two things. Was it internal to me or external to me? Was there some sort of being outside of myself that generated the feeling in me? Or was it simply me? A subjective internal experience and that alone. Now, here's the, here's, the, here's the interesting part. Not entirely certain that it matters. Well, how can it not matter? Well, check it out. Let's say I have a migraine headache. Okay? If I have a migraine headache, it is, by definition, an internal subjective experience. Full stop. Nobody outside of me experiences that headache. The only question that's important to me, the person experiencing the migraine headache, is what it feels like. It's 150% real to me. I have a migraine headache. Ah, my head is throbbing. My head is throbbing. So what do I do? I go to the doctor. That experience is 150% real to me. Full stop. So what do I do? I go to a doctor. If the doctor turns to me and says, I can find nothing wrong. There's no evidence that, that's, that, that you're really having a migraine headache. Do I now go, oh good, that's a relief, it doesn't exist. Phew, of course not. Neither do you, neither does anybody. Why? It's 150% real to you. Therefore, it's happening for real inside of you. And if I go to a doctor and he can't locate a source, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna just go, okay, thank God. No, I can't do that. Why? Because I'm still experiencing the pain. So I go to somebody else. That's the first thing I do. Now let's say he can't find a source. He does all these tests on me, can't find a source. But every, let's say my headache has, has, a, has a pattern. Every Sunday between 2 and 5, I experience a power. Between the hours of 2 and 5, I experience a really powerful, intense migraine headache. That pain is 150% real to me. I don't need any justification outside of myself at all. Nobody does. Why? Because I am experiencing it directly. It's 100% real to me. And if I go to a doctor and he tells me it's not happening, I won't accept that. Why? Because I'm experiencing it for real. So I go to another doctor. If he tells me it's not happening, there, or he, he would tell me he finds no source for it, I would keep going to doctors. Now let's say I go to four. And none of them can find anything that they think would be causing it. I would still maintain that there is a source, first of all. Why? Because I am experiencing it directly. And I cannot negate the reality of my own experience. Might I check myself? Sure. Uh, am I crazy? I'd ask my wife. Sweetheart, am I crazy? Well, I wouldn't ask my wife. She'd be like, yeah, I told you. I told you fucking crazy. You're totally crazy. <laughs> I went, all right, I'd, I'd ask my friends. No, I'd ask my wife. Am I crazy? She'd go, no, you're not. You're a completely reasonable human being. You have two and a half kids, a white picket fence. Yeah, see, I'm an average, average human being. I have two and a half kids. No, she'd go, no, you're not crazy. You're a middle manager at this company. You're doing very successful. If all evidence about my stability and sanity lined up with reality, in other words, I had no reason to doubt that I was just, you know, imagining something, hallucinating an experience because I had no prior history of hallucination and I was completely stable and sane except for this one anomaly, The better, the better guess it'd be that something real that we have not yet detected is causing the experience, then the experience isn't real. That'd be the better guess. Now, let's broaden the analogy to make it religion at large. Let's say there were 250 people in the immediate area who had an identical experience to me. 
You get a headache around Sunday, two to five? Yes, yeah, so do I. Oh my God, it's so... Would I now know for almost for a fact that my experience is real? Yeah. Those two combined. Powerful, subjective, intense. Intense is the key. If it's something that's really 100% real to you, that's a factor that cannot be ignored. And that's powerfully compelling in terms of evidence. For me personally, it's the only thing I need. Why? Because the pain is 150% real to me. Now, you're a skeptical that I'm actually having an a, a headache. Yeah, you're an atheist, so you're skeptical about everything. I'm skeptical about everything. I don't believe you, Craig. <laughs> okay, so think about this. In, given our analogy, how on earth do I demonstrate it to you? And why do I care? More importantly. I mean, when atheists say provide evidence, what you guys really mean is provide evidence for me. Why provide evidence? I don't give a fuck what you believe, honestly. Why <laughs> provide evidence for you? Why? Okay, great. Why? I don't actually care what you believe. I don't believe you, Craig. It doesn't matter to me. It's not relevant. It's really not. When atheists say provide evidence, the thing that you mean is provide evidence for me. All I'm trying to demonstrate to you is that I need no justification past intense experience. Nobody does. Nobody ever has. The way we, we process epistemology is all wrong. If somebody's experiencing a migraine headache, they don't need to justify that past the experience itself. Now, let's broaden the analogy and make it almost identical to religion. So let's say instead of me subjectively experiencing something, <clears throat> see, I, I've agreed with you, atheist. I'm skeptical too that something outside of myself, I'm skeptical that God exists, atheist, I'm skeptical. That there's actually a Jesus Christ, you know, only Son of God, producing this experience inside of me. I think, like you, I'm really, really skeptical, so I think it's solely an internal, subjective experience. Here's why that might not matter. Because it's a positive one. So every, instead of me experiencing a migraine headache every Sunday, between 2 and 5, I experience subjectively, a really, really powerful feeling of peace, oneness with the world at large, that my life is charged up with meaning and deeply significant, that whatever happens in the future doesn't necessarily matter because there is an agency outside of myself that is controlling everything and that agency is benevolent. So I'm in good hands. And that fills me with peace of mind, contentment in my heart. And it happens every Sunday between 2 and 5. And I got 250 witnesses to the fact that the same thing happens to them to one degree or another. Now, now you have an actual spiritual experience. And that experience is, that, that experience is a net positive does nothing but fill me up with peace of mind, contentment in my heart, makes me actually more loving towards my fellow man. Okay, it's, I, I'm, I'm giving you, I'm giving it, you atheist, the, the, I'm giving it to you. There's nothing outside of me producing it. I'm admitting it's totally subjective, internal. But I'm giving you what that, what that experience actually is. Telling you, yeah, I agree. It's subjective, it's internal, and it's really, but it's really powerful. And these are, these are what hap this is what happens. Every Sunday between 2 and 5, I subjectively experience love for my fellow man, peace and contentment in my heart. A really, really powerful subjective feeling that my life is really deeply significant and charged with meaning and I was put here for a reason. And it's humbling to me because now I got I got to I got to figure out a way to serve humanity better than I've been doing. See, it doesn't really matter if the experience is perceived or imagined. Those are the two options. There isn't a third: perceived experience, imagined experience. What matters is what I do with the experience moving forward. Do I have this experience, this powerful experience on Sunday between 2 and 5 and go, you know, i got to start hating gays more. <laughs> I, I, better, I better throw out my science books. No. 
I have a choice in how I interpret the experience and what it produces in me in the world at large. And if the experience is a net positive, you know, does it honest to God make a difference? Does it honest to God make a difference whether it's perceived or imagined? I don't know. You tell me. It doesn't seem like it to me, but whatever. It's not my life. Amen. Well, this one is my life. Amen. <laughs>